Okay, let's look at questions 18 through 21. So 18 is asking us to find the y-intercept. So if I give you y equals 10x, the important thing to realize is that 10x is the same thing as 10x plus 0. And as we said, this is the y-intercept. Okay. The alternative manner of doing this question is, again, if you're given y equals 10x, when you're given this, uh, this equation, we know that when x is equal to 0, whatever y is, is the y-intercept. Okay, um, We sometimes denote, instead of calling it y, we'll sometimes even just call it b. Okay, Part of that, from above, y equals mx plus b. So if I make x 0, we have 10 times 0 equals y, so y equals 0. So the y-intercept in this, this technique is still 0. So the point would be 0, comma 0. Um, if we look at the next question, uh, number 19, you're asked to graph x equals 1. So what we want to remember is when you have an x graph, um, it goes up and down. So I give you x equals 1, then we know that it goes up and down at 1. Okay. So the, what this technically means is the collection of, of, of the, the, the line that contains all the x values that are 1. So it'll have 1, 0, it'll have 1, 2, it'll have 1, let's say 4, um, you could go down here and say it has 1, negative 2, etc., etc. So the collection of all where all the x values are 1. Okay. Similarly, if we look at the next question, number 20, it says we want to graph y equals 1. So when you graph y equals 1, it's the same idea, except now we're looking at the y values always being 1. So y equals 1. Every y value would be 1. So this one would be 0, comma, oops, 0, comma, 1. This one would be maybe 2, comma, 1. But no matter what points I pick, every y value is 1. And I'm doing positives to, because it's more uh, intuitive. But, of course, you could go here and be like negative 3, 1, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, that's, so when it's a y equals graph, we know that when it's y equals that we have a horizontal line, whereas if it's x equals we have a vertical line. Okay? Um, if we next look at the next one, the next one's saying what is the slope? So let me put that image back up and blow it up a little bit. So here we have a better uh, better picture of, of the picture. <laughs> and so um, the slope, we know slope is rise over run. So what I want to do is I pick any point. You don't have to pick this point. You could have picked this point. You could have picked this point. Just pick a definitive point, and we're going to go to the next point. So I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to go to this point. So if we look, we drop how much? One, two, three, four, and we go to the right how much? One, two, three, four. So because we're dropping four, it's negative four, and then we go to the right four. So it's negative four over four, which is equal to negative one. Note also that you could have started right here at this point, and we went up, you would have gone up 4 and to the left, negative 4. So that would have been positive 4 over negative 4, but that still is equal to negative 1. So whether you're going down and to the right or up and to the left, you always end up at the same point. Um, and that's the kind of cool thing about slope. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It's, you're still going to end up. But commonly we, did what we do what we're in orange. We usually go up and down first and then left or right. Okay. But note the direction. Right. Direction matters. So because I'm going down in this scenario and to the right, when you go down it's negative, And when you go to the right it's positive. Hence a negative divided by a positive is going to give me a negative. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'll see you when I see you.